joined today by J.R. Romano. Today, uh, we have a, a little bit of a special guest. Uh, now, Roman, I apologize. How do you how do you pronounce your last name? Uh, Conniger. Conniger. Okay. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on because something very interesting happened to you this week, and I wanted the opportunity for you because you know you had shared something on Twitter it went. But it, it got shared quite a bit. You had a, a big reach, and there's a very specific reason um, you were uh, kind of upset. Why, why don't you kind of talk? Well, first of all, actually, why don't you kind of tell your story a little bit um, for those that may be unfamiliar with you, or, or, or you know, where you're from, and and uh, basically how you know how you t- got involved with the Republican Party. Uh, um, my name is Roman Condiger. I moved here from Bangladesh. When I was 10 years old and I moved to the United States uh, in 2010, and I moved here uh, with my mother. Uh, When I was three years old, we had to leave Bangladesh. We had to leave my home to move to India uh, because the government of Bangladesh were after us. And we couldn't live there anymore because if we stayed there any longer, we would have most likely died. And I wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, I've never really knew what freedom actually felt like until I moved to the United States. Uh, that's uh, when I first moved here. I, the, from the instant, I knew that this is what freedom is because everyone where they were able to live free, everyone was smiling, everyone, everyone had a reason to live, and I thought to myself, this is how I want to live my life. And when I see the involvement of Democratic Party and their ideology, I always feel like it's they're here to hinder society. They're here to uh, hinder individual rights and individual uh, liberty by extending the government. And I don't want a larger government for the American government, uh, American system. I want something very small. I want something so people can live the way they want to be. They want to live and to help every individual as I can. That's why I got involved with the Republican Party, because we believe in the idea of small government and uh, more individual rights. So so and I think what's a, a lot for a lot of Democrats, what's hard to hear is, is you are a Bangladeshian Muslim refugee yeah. and you are not what they want the stereotype of a Republican to be. And the reason that you're a Republican isn't, isn't has to do with the color of anyone's skins. It doesn't have to do with what, what religious faith anyone practice. It has to do with loving liberty and freedom and recognizing that Democrats want to limit certain freedoms and restrict us here. And then, you know, at the end of the day, all of every time in history that a government has tried to limit freedom, it just the, the more and more limitations happen. Now, what is interesting and why I wanted to bring you on is this past week you went, um, you got a ticket. You, you, and, and by the way, for anyone listening, Roman is 18 years old. He's going to be a freshman in college. So, so Roman literally um, is experiencing this with fresh eyes um, and, and, and learn to love this country. And so you, wanted to go listen to Candace Owens and Charlie Kirk and tell everyone what happened. Uh, I had the ticket from beforehand to go see Charlie Kirk and uh, Candace Owens. And when we were waiting in line uh, to wait to uh, show them my ID, to show that I'm on the list or not, and they, the people of UConn told me that I was not in the list that I was supposed to be, and I Uh, And I know for a fact I've gotten the ticket from beforehand. In fact, I have the email showing me that I have the ticket. And when we went there, they told us that uh, we don't they don't have the ticket. They don't have me on the list. So it was very upsetting for me. I I really want to see them speak. I really want to know what they have to say. I've been following around. I've been following them on social media and hearing them speak. I agree with everything that they say. And. I want to be able to listen more more to them. And it was upsetting that I wasn't allowed to go in. So I we just waited in line. Uh, and that's when the protesters from the left came in. What I was going to say, Roman, one of the other things that people may not know, being so young, it's not easy for you to get to UConn from West Haven, right? You, it's not like you have a car or, or you have this, you know, you actually, it, it, it took a little effort to get up to UConn to, to experience this. And this is something that you wanted that they that the left took away from you is the point that I wanted to make. Uh, I agree. Yeah. So anyway, and, and so the protesters show up, and now what happens? The protesters show up. Uh, they were doing a chant about uh, 
uh, stopping the deportations, not building the walls. At that point, I didn't really care. They can say whatever they want. Uh, people have their own individual belief. I'm all for free speech. That's why I didn't really care. And that's when the protesters started calling everyone uh, members of the KKK. They started calling people um, Nazis. And that's when I decided that I'm going to I practice my free speech as well. And so I started to build a wall chant. And the, right after a few minutes later, I decided I'm going to walk walk away to go back to the car to wait for the people to leave the uh, event. And that's when a bunch of protesters came up to me and uh, called me the, the exact words, uh, Nazi scum uh, of a white supremacist and a KKK. The, the One of them came up to me and said, you you are a white nationalist Nazi scum. You should not be in this country. Wow, the hypocrisy when you think about it. Here here's someone you escaped persecution. You you your family literally had to run for their lives to to another country. You're fleeing your homeland, and you have the left because they cannot tolerate dissension or a difference of opinion, telling you to leave the country. Wow, wow. correct. And were were you alone when they accosted you like this, or or were there other people around? Oh no, other people other people saw it, such as Angel Kadena, uh, Matt O'Brien. Other people saw this event happening. Um, and so, what was your immediate thought when they started doing this to you? Like, what what was what was your like what was going through your mind as these people were kind of accosting you? A lot of things were going through my mind. It's uh, uh, I remember at one point they they were telling people they stand up for immigrants, they stand up for minorities, they stand up for Muslims, and I am all three. Yet they don't. Every time anyone else has a different opinion, they tend to attack those people. They attacked me for having some other view other than a liberal ideology. I am a very, very conservative person because I believe in the idea of preserving individual rights and individual liberty. And when the left couldn't stand what I stand for, they started attacking me. And well, it's, it's something I expected from the beginning, but it was, it was, it was a harsh thing to, for them to say definitely. But well, there's nothing we can do about it other than, you know, do what, what I've always been doing uh, to fight for every single individual for this nation. That's what I want to do. So, so when you pointed out your history, uh, or, or did you point out your history and did that change their perspective at all? I wasn't able to point out my history. Uh, when I tried to point out uh, about myself, well, a few of them became very quiet. And then a few of them said, we're done with this conversation. We're going to go. And, uh, they didn't listen to anything I have to say. Right. So once once you highlighted the fact that you are in a category that they claim to own, um, and you didn't you didn't fit their narrative, they they basically walked away, not bothering to hear your side about why you believe in the freedoms you believe in, why you believe the United States is the is is the best country in the world. And you and I have talked about that. Um, and I think that's kind of what is so scary about the left is they're unwilling to hear any different perspective. And it doesn't matter the topic, by the way, it could be immigration. It could be, uh, I mean, listen, my favorite example, when it comes to Van Jones, who is a, as liberal as they come, gave credit to Republican governors across the country because they're, they've been really focused on sentencing reform and how they're doing, like uh, changing the lives of young people of color. And it's Republicans leading that charge. And, and Van Jones was immediately attacked by everyone on the left. It's almost as like they cannot accept reality, and and because if their reality gets altered, then the world's over. Yeah, uh, correct. That's what I've always felt that has been happening with the left. Um, when I first moved into the United States, I've considered myself a Democrat and a member of the left simply because everyone told me when I lived in New York that all Muslims, all immigrants, all uh, – all, all people of color vote for Democrats because Democrats want good for the minorities. But then my mother and I quickly realized that the Democrats tend to, and the, and the left tend to inflict fear in order to gain support. And that's the reason why we escaped my country, Bangladesh, because we were tired of being scared for our lives every day. And when we heard that they were, when we realized that they were inflicting fear in order to gain support, that's when my mother and I realized we can't be the, Democrats, we escaped from fear, and now we have to live in fear again. That's that's not what we want. Well, listen, Roman, keep up the fight. You, you know, it's only going to get worse when you get to college. 
Uh, but I really appreciate you taking the time and, and telling your side of the story that happened to you over the week. Um, thank you so much. And, and listen, stay involved. Uh, I hope you run for office again. I know you also just got recognized. You, you got appointed to a state commission, did you? Correct. Yeah, I, I got appointed to uh, a commission of equity and opportunity by Governor Ned Lamont and Bob Duff. Well, it'll be very interesting once they start to hear your perspective, what happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, Roman, thank you so much for joining us. Keep up the fight and um, <clears throat> and good luck in school. Oh, thank you. Thank you.